Build your own deer factory. Brought to you by Mineral Miser. Lasts longer, grows them stronger. Folks, I'm excited here today to be with Bob Wallace with Chestnut Hill Nursery, part of Real Tree Nurseries. Uh, and we got, we're gonna talk about something you may not be aware of. You know, for years I've heard people talk about acorns. All the hunters know about acorns. They ask me every year how the acorn crop's gonna be. And they, everybody knows that deer like acorns. But believe it or not, acorns are really second choice to their, their true food, which doesn't exist out there anymore in most places. And uh, they don't know, I bet you, Bob, 99% of the hunters don't know that for thousands, if not millions of years, chestnuts were the prime preferred nut by a white-tailed deer. That's correct. Chestnuts were the most common tree in the eastern hardwood forest, and we've got some of the nuts from our orchard here. Chestnuts were, grew from Maine to North Florida, all the way west to Illinois and Michigan and they were 25% of the forest, but they were killed by a disease accidentally introduced from China in the early 1900s. And in the space of 30 years, over 30 million trees got wiped out in uh, probably the largest ecological disaster in American history. Absolutely, and it also contributed to the demise of the passenger pigeon. That's correct, yep. The, uh, the, Chestnut was an amazing food. It's very high in carbohydrates, half carbohydrates, 10% protein, and it's a, it was an incredible food source, not just for wildlife, but of course also for the settlers and for oh, the natives yeah. of oh, North yeah, America. Absolutely, absolutely. And it doesn't have tannin, the tannin content that acorns have, so it's much more digestible. The deer will seek out chestnuts over acorns because the nuts are sweet, and that's why we roast them. It's the same thing. And exactly. The, uh, the food value is tremendous, and they will bear as much carbohydrate per acre as an acre of corn. Wow, that's, I didn't know that, that's cool. Now, you, you, you're third generation. That's right. Third generation tree breeder. My grandfather had a friend who was pheasant hunting in Ohio and found a single American chestnut living in a grove of dead trees. And they took cuttings from that tree and crossed grafted them, crossed them with Chinese chestnut. The blight came from China, so Chinese chestnuts are resistant, but they don't have very good nut quality or tree quality. Yeah. But the hybrid by my grandfather crossing the American and the Chinese created a tree that had both the nut characteristics of the American, the nut and tree qualities, but the resistance of the Chinese. And so we have now a chestnut that can repopulate the forests of eastern North America and with a really high quality food. So we're, put, we're bringing the chestnut back, folks, and, we, and I'm excited about it. And it's a tremendous opportunity for what Bob, and his father and grandfather have done, and now they're, they're available through Realtree Nursery. I'll tell you, I, I'm excited about it, and uh, you're gonna be hearing a lot about it uh, in North American Whitetail over the, the next several shows. So thanks so much for doing this. I tell you, it's exciting. I'm happy to be here, thank you. Stan, I know James Kroll is very impressed with these chestnuts, and it's awesome how they've selectively bred them to bring them back. It is. That was an awesome piece. Plus, Dr. James Kroll looks at some special trees for making your land a deer hotspot. The does will teach the fawns, and they'll come back oh, yeah. again every single year. All this and more on North American Whitetail Television. Now, here are your hosts, Stan Potts and 